because I want to just kind of like um, talk about my personal journey to get here. And I'll be, I will be brief. I don't want to spend ages and ages talking because I want to get this thing kicked off. Um, but for me, I guess this, this began about seven years ago when I first discovered Scrum. And um, I realized immediately when I read Ken Schwaber's first book on Scrum that the values and principles he talked about in that book, which have really been a little bit lost since then in, in, the, in the sort of drive towards process and methodology and certification. But the principles and values he talks about in that book align so beautifully with my own life uh, that I knew I'd found the right thing for me and I knew that this was kind of a pathway I'd be following for a long time. Um, and about a year after that, you know, after, after trying to introduce that at the company I was working at with, you know, limited success because it's, we were all new to the game back then, uh, I left there and joined a startup company and got royally screwed over um, to the point where I was, it's the first time, probably I had the only time in my life I was physically removed by the police from a premises. <laughs> so it was really the most unpleasant experience I could have ever had. <laughs> But after that, you know, because, because I guess partly because of Scrum, I had the chance to reflect. I had the chance to do my own personal retrospective. And um, I recognized a pattern in my life whereby when I pursued profit, things screwed up. So I thought, and that was my motivation for joining this startup company. I didn't believe in what they were doing, but I believed that I could make lots of money from it. And so I recognized this is something I didn't want to do anymore. Right. Retrospectives are about change, they're about new behavior, making, making decisions to do something new and different. So I decided that I would stop seeking, I was unemployed at that point of course, I, I would stop seeking money and I would begin to seek people. <coughs> and that, since that day, it was back in two, um, just at the end of 2005, beginning of 2006, that has been my pathway. I've been looking for good people and um, what has followed from that has been some amazing things. I've met, you know, I really have met some wonderful people, I've joined some great communities online communities, personal communities, uh, and I've got to work with some fantastic companies over that time. So for me, that's, you know, that's kind of how this, this really got going. And then about uh, in the beginning of 2009, I found myself once again unemployed. Um, I joined the company and the, you know, the recession hit, so they couldn't keep me. I found myself without a job. And again, there's an opportunity there, of course, isn't there? So the opportunity I took was to say, well, I've got this skill um, to teach Scrum, and I've got a certification to teach Scrum. How can I use that uh, in this recession? And so I put together this program called Welfare CSM that some of you uh, actually have come through. In fact, it might be nice to know who came through the, who has, who, who did that Welfare CSM program? There's a few people here. Thanks. So, so it's great, you know, that you guys have kind of, we've stayed friends and we've stayed in contact and, uh, and had some follow up there. But the purpose of Welfare CSM was, um, it sounds like a, a selfless program, you know, the giving back to the community and all that. There's a little element of that. But I have to say, it was very selfish. What I wanted to do with that program was discover how I could teach Scrum outside of software. So the price of admission to a welfare CSM class wasn't measured in dollars, it was measured in bring a friend along who knows nothing about software. That was the intent. So the people coming, that was their price of admission. So we had these courses where, you know, something between 30 and 40 people, 40% 40 of the people on the course were from outside of software. Um, and people came from the fields, I've made a quick list here, it's, it's not complete by any means. We've got education, community work, science, architecture, law, yoga, and taxidermy. So it's a, it's a wonderful list, and I'm sure it's longer than that, and I've missed out a few things. But what I discovered in that year, year and a, just over a year, I guess, was that Scrum really is applicable in all kinds of different environments. Um, and so when I joined the Scrum Alliance um, a little after that, that was my, my motivation for joining the Scrum Alliance, was to see what we could do with Scrum. To take, the, you know, the, the key word here in this, in this conference is beyond. So my intention for joining the Scrum Alliance is let's take, let's take Scrum beyond software, let's take Scrum beyond certification, let's take Scrum into the, big, into the big real world of work and actually live that mission statement to transform the world of work that's been tagged on the Scrum Alliance website for some time. I'm all about, you know, it's about building community, and this is why, you know, Jerry and I have had some great conversations about this over the year, that's why Jerry's now working at Scrum Alliance, too. well, the intent was to really come in here and build up some good community in this space. Um, part of that was the Orlando gathering in March, uh, where Harrison Allen, the, the guy that invented open space technology, came and did a wonderful open space there to look at the future of the Scrum Alliance, and that's when I met Suzanne, who I'll introduce a bit more uh, later. Um, but again, this, this open space came out of that open space. So one thing always, always you know, triggers off another. 
Uh, so here we are, and, and where we are is, is interesting too. We are, and we're at Gangplank. Uh, for those of you who were here yesterday during the day, you will see that this space is utterly different today than it was yesterday. Yesterday it was full of desks and workstations and, and small teams talking and notice boards full of sticky notes and visibility everywhere. This is um, a place that lives and breathes the values of Agile, the values of Scrum. It just, it just does it on a day-to-day you know, day -day basis. And it's an absolute honor to be able to be here and a pleasure to be here. And I really want to sort of thank the guys who put this together, first of all for their vision in doing something like this. And though this is a place that's open to lots of different companies to come in and work and collaborate. It's a collaboration space. And there's going to be an opportunity for you all to learn a bit more about Gangplank later. There'll be a session on, on talking about Gangplank if you're interested. But I do want to thank those guys for you know, opening up the space to us. And, uh, and thank everyone who came here yesterday to, to change it from what it was on Friday to what it is today, which is an open space. We now have an open space. Um, so finally, I'm almost done. <laughs> um, the theme of, of today is Scrum Beyond Software. There's three words in there. There's one word that is really, really key, and that's the middle word. The middle word is beyond. We're looking beyond. We're looking, we're looking beyond constraints here. Now, what can Scrum really be? So we've got, you know, from Scrum, I think we can take um, a beautiful, simple framework and a, a sense of rhythm. Um, and from software, we can take this idea of craftsmanship and love for what we do. Because that's what software developers are, they're craftsmen. And they're generally people who really are passionate about what they do. So we've got passion and craftsmanship, we've got rhythm and framework. And then we go beyond that. Where do we go with it? Where can we take this to? The possibilities are really endless. You know, there's, there's a whole world of, of business, a whole world of work out there that is stuck and needs new life. So, um, good luck with it. And I want to quickly introduce Suzanne Daigle, who is your open space facilitator. <laughs>